everyone and welcome to this third instalment of the Revise with Miss W series. Today we're going to be looking at question three on paper one. So if you've been through the other Revise with Miss W videos, you will have already looked at this source, which is Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. Um, I'm hoping that you've already read through it. But if not, pause the video now, head over to my website, asiaexams.wordpress.com, and you can get this download for free. Download it and give yourself five minutes to read through this extract, ready for the question that we're going to go through in just a moment. So question three is based on the whole of the source, and it looks at the effect of structural features within the whole of the source. Um, you need to look at the beginning, the middle, and the end of that source and see how the writer has structured it in such a way as to achieve certain effects, okay? Now, some of these structural features I've listed here. So you're looking for things like the setting, you're looking for whether it's written in first, second, or third person, what the introduction is like, what does it focus on at the very beginning, um, does it focus on description, um, what happens in the concluding section of that source? Um, is the, the actual structure of the written piece um, chronological? Is it linear, non-linear? Is there a climactic moment that has a particular effect? Um, does the source contain any flashbacks or flash forwards? Um, is there any foreshadowing or repeated ideas or repeated motifs? Okay, so those are some of the things that you could um, analyse and, and pick out of those sources. Um, but the most important thing that you need to consider when you're answering this question is how, what effect, how and why has the writer used these um, structural features and what effect do they have on the reader themselves? So because this question is based on the whole of the source, you need to read through all of it and I would um, focus on the beginning, the middle and the end. And it's worth eight marks, this question. So uh, aim for three paragraphs and you've got 10 minutes to actually answer it. So the question I'm going to give you to revise today is this one. You now need to think about the whole of the source. This text is from the beginning of a novel. How has the writer structured the text to interest you as a reader? Now, this is the general opening of the question. So expect to see something written like that for question three on paper one when you do your exam next year. You could write about what the writer focuses your attention on at the beginning, how and why the writer changes this focus as the source develops and any other structural features that interest you. Now it says you could write, but in my mind, I would change that word to could. Um, I would change the word from could to should. And what they're asking you to do is look at the very beginning to see what's going on. And they want you to see how that structure has changed throughout the source and why the writer has done that. Okay, so I'm going to pop a timer on the screen, a 10 minute timer. So if you haven't had a chance to read through that source already, then pause the video, read through the source, and then you've now got 10 minutes to have a go at writing this question. You can get the flow charts and my sample answers and my tutorial videos on my website. And also, obviously, you're on YouTube right now, so you can watch the tutorial videos, no problem at all. So I definitely advise you watch the tutorial for this question before you actually attempt the answer now. So I'm going to pop the timer on now, and then in 10 minutes' time, we'll have a look at the kinds of things that you could have used for your answer.
Okay, so you've now had your 10 minutes. I'm hoping that you've managed to do three paragraphs. But if not, don't worry, um, all of this practice will help with your timing, okay? So some of the things that you could have looked at uh, and analysed within this source are these. So there's a constant reference to time. Things like it's only 11pm and then she talks about um, how yesterday happened. She talks about um, today. She talks about... Um, times when she um, was elsewhere. There's constant references to time throughout the actual um, text. If you look here, I've actually highlighted this bit here. She says, will I still be here in a month, okay? Yesterday afternoon, it's only 11 p.m. So all of these references to time, um, it's almost like she's um, pondering and considering how long she's got left with her, her father and um, I think how long she will have to endure the hurt that she's going through. So you've got all of these references to time that you could mention. Okay, let's just zoom back out. Um, we've also got the repeated idea of escapism. So if you look, you she talks about um, how she wants to use... Um, the sea to escape. She talks about floating on her back. This is is plonked right in the middle of the extract, this um, flashback, which is another structural feature, this flashback to the day before when she actually went for a swim and was stung. So um, she's almost referencing the fact that she wants to escape her reality. Okay, and that flashback is almost like um, a, the, a significant event because it highlights the pain that she's going through. Um, she also talks about escapism at the very end of the extract where she talks about wanting to visit different places. Um, she talks about if tourists, um, uh, the tourists being stung on the beach, but she talks about how they've come from various areas. And then she talks about the word Trieste, which we know means sadness. So she actually ends the extract discussing her main predominant emotion, which is sadness, okay, extreme sadness. So you've got this flashback which highlights the extreme pain she's in, and then you've got at the end of the extract the extreme sadness. So again, that's a repeated idea, and you've also got the structural feature here of that flashback. So you've got a few structural features that you could mention there. You could discuss the fact that it's written in first person. Um, first person is always quite an easy thing to, to discuss because um, when um, things are written in first person, it's easy for you to, as a reader, to um, view, I suppose, how that person is feeling. So because it's written in first person, she is telling us her inner thoughts and feelings. So that... Um, is key to understanding how she feels about her father's illness at this point in time. Um, this one sentence paragraph is rather significant as well. So we'll just have a look at this. So at the very beginning, we've got this one sentence paragraph, which is a structural feature. So what I am saying is that if it is broken, so am I. So again, we've got um, the highlighted emphasis of the fact that she feels broken as a person. So it's not just her father that's broken by the paralysis, it's actually her that is broken because um, of the extreme sadness and grief that she's going through because of her father's illness. That one sentence paragraph highlights um, the most important feeling um, that she has, okay? So that's a really significant structural feature at the very beginning of that source that you could discuss. You could also talk about the fact that she um, has a detailed focus on this laptop at the very beginning. Um, she almost uses that laptop um, as a way to explain how she feels. It's hard to tell people how you feel about something when you are grief stricken. So she almost uses the laptop as a way in to describe how she is broken as an individual. And that laptop um, helps her explore that idea. So I think it's significant that the extract opens with that description of the laptop. Um, and then finally, I mean, there's lots you could say about this extract, but um, the last thing that I thought was particularly significant, and I've already hinted at it really, was the fact that that final paragraph um, talks about the word Trieste. 
So she's talking about, I've always wanted to go to Trieste. So that, again, that repeated idea of escapism, but also the fact that that word means extreme, utter sadness. Uh, and so she's leaving the reader with, um, with in no uncertain terms, really, that we understand completely that she is grief stricken. So she's leaving us with that idea um, that there's no escape from her reality, uh, that her father is suffering from this awful illness um, and the way she feels about it. So I think if you were um, following the structure that I've given you, which is to choose something from the beginning, the middle and the end, then you could easily discuss the description of the laptop or the one sentence paragraph. You could then discuss the flashback in the middle, which highlights her pain. And then you could discuss that repeated idea of the escapism and the emphasis on the word um, Trieste at the end. OK, obviously, there's other things that we've discussed. But if you wanted to stick to that beginning, middle end plan, then that's what I would do. OK, so I'm hoping that that has helped you um, answer that question if you haven't already done so. And uh, giving you some ideas about the kinds of things that you can analyse for question three on paper one. Um, please stay tuned um, to the channel. There'll be question four revise with Miss W uploaded very soon um, and um, lots of new uploads over the next um, few months. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up um, and you can head over to my website asiaexams.wordpress.com for lots of free downloads. Um, and also you can follow me on Twitter at asiaexams if you've got any questions at all about any of the videos. Thanks ever so much for listening today. Hope to see you soon.